Good morning. Uh, my name is Todd, and I'm going to be your uh, logic tutor here. Uh, we're continuing with calculating the truth values of large complex statements with some unknown truth values. And in this exercise, or these exercises, uh, oops, let me get this uh, fixed here for you. Uh, a, B, and C are going to be true. Uh, X, Y, and Z are going to be false. And L, M, N, N are unknown. Okay, and let's calculate the truth value of uh, some large expressions like this one right here, um, if possible. All right, so uh, let's fill in the values as we know them to be. Um, M is one of those that's unknown, so it could be true or it could be false. Um, A is true, so I'm going to write true over true. And L is also unknown, so it could be true or it could be false. So now we're going to have to start doing some calculations. Uh, and notice um, that this A or L is in brackets, so we have to calculate the truth value of this disjunction before moving on and calculating the truth value of the conditional. All right, so let's begin. Uh, A is always true, so we're going to assume it's true. And L could be true or false, so first we're going to assume that it's true. And so we're thinking about a true. The first disjunct is true. The second disjunct is true. Go look it up on the uh, truth table on the OR, and we discover that it's true. Uh, now we're going to assume that L is false. Of course, A is still true, because A is always true. Um, and uh, this would be case two, I believe. And we go look it up. First disjunct is true. Second disjunct is false. And we'll see that it's true. So it didn't matter what L was. This whole disjunction came out to be true. All right. So we can take this result and do the if-then with the M. All right, so now remember M is true or it's false. And uh, our disjunction is true uh, no matter what. So we'll write true over true. And we will do the conditional now. So in the first case, we're assuming uh, that M is true. And of course, the disjunction we discovered was true. So we're looking for a case where the antecedent, because we're doing a conditional, the antecedent is true and the consequent is true. That's line one. And we go across to the conditional. We will see that that is true. Okay. So now let's consider the case where M is false and the disjunction is, well, true. So we look um, for the case where the antecedent is false and the consequent is true. Uh, I think that would be line three. We go across to the conditional and we discover that this is true. So um, it doesn't matter what M is. Uh, we're going to get true either way. So we can say that this whole expression is true. All right. Let's move on to the next one here. Here, um, M is unknown, so we'll write true over false. Uh, A is known to be true, um, but we're negating the A. See, the negation applies to the A. So um, uh, we're going to say that not A is false. And X over here is known to be false. Um, so we could write false over false. Um, so these actually have known truth values. So we can just write false for not A and false for X and then do the disjunction. False or false, that's line four. We look the disjunction and we'll discover it's false. So we know that this whole disjunction is false. Now we have to do uh, the M, which could be true or false, or uh, this disjunction over here, which we discovered is false. So this disjunction to the right could be false or it could be false. And we're going to do a disjunction with true or false. So in the first case, uh, true or false, that's line two, we would go look that up and we would discover that that's true right down there. And then we're going to assume that M is 
false, but uh, this over here is, is, is false. We're going to look that up. So we have false or false, which would be line four. We look it up and we discover that that is false. So uh, depending on what M was, we got true or we got false, uh, which means that the truth value of the entire expression is unknown. We can't figure out whether the expression is true or false. Okay, let's move on to another one. All right, here. Is that next? No. Here we go. Okay. Now, you might think that this one is impossible to do because notice that uh, we have N and L, and both of those are unknown. Okay. But let's see if we can calculate the truth value of this expression nonetheless. Okay. Um, first thing first, uh, let's put in the values. N could be true or it could be false. And now notice over here we have not N. So when we're assuming N is true, like right here, not N would be false. And when we're assuming N is false, not N would be true. So that's how we could indicate that. And we're going to need to do this by conditional calculation before we do the if then with the L. And we'll write the values in for L later. First, let's do this by conditional. All right. Uh, so false, if and only if true, that would be line three on our truth table, our basic truth table. And we'd go over to the by conditional, and we would discover in that case that they're false. Okay, so we've calculated the numerator, assuming n is true. Let's assume that n is false. So we would have true if and only if false. That would be uh, line 2, I believe. We go over to the by conditional. We look that up, and we discover that that's also false. So since we got false over false, we know the whole antecedent, this was all part of an antecedent, is false. So now we have to calculate false antecedent with L. And L could be true or L could be false. So uh, as we said, the, the um, antecedent is false. So we'll write false over false. And we have to do the if then with the true then false. So the first case um, is false then true true. And if we look that up, that is line three, I believe, and we would see that that is, that is true. So now we're going to assume that the antecedent is false, and the consequent is false. That's line four. And if we look up the if then, we're going to see that it is true. So we got true in either case. So we're going to say that this thing is tr true. Okay. So, um, I guess, suppose the tricky thing here was this N business, uh, N if and only if not N, and you see that I was able to represent that by supposing when N is supposed to be true, not N would be false, and vice versa. Okay, let's move on to another one, getting a bit more complicated as we go. Okay, uh, might speed up just a little bit here. Let's write in the values as we know them to be. L is unknown, so it's true or false. B is true, so we'll write true over true. M is an unknown, so we'll write true over false. A is true, so we'll write true over true. And Z is false, so we'll write false over false. Okay. Now we have to start calculating. Now notice we have a big bracket out here, so we have to calculate the value of that first, but before we can do that, we have to calculate the B or the M and the A and the Z. Okay, uh, let me start with the first disjunction here. Let's uh, uh, consider this case, B is true, and M is assumed to be true. True or true is true, okay? Uh, now let's uh, consider the second case where M is false. True or false is 
true. So what we have discovered is that the first disjunction is true. So let's calculate what the truth value is over here. Now A is true in either case and F is false in either case, so we only need to calculate this one time. So we're looking at true and false. If we go look that up on our truth table, we discover that that is false. Okay, so the second disjunct is false. Okay, but now um, these two disjunctions uh, formed a conjunction, so we need to figure out the truth value of the conjunction of those. Uh, so this is case two, true and false. We look over to the conjunction and we discover that true and false is false. Okay, so what we've discovered is the value of that whole disjunct is false and we need to do the disjunction with L and our result and L could be true or L could be false uh, and we need to do a disjunction with this false so it's true over false or and this is false over false since we know it's always false let's consider the numerator true or false we look that up we discover that that's true look this one up, false or false, we discover is false. So, depending on what L is, we get um, a final truth value of true or false. So, it depends on what L is. So, in other words, whoa, excuse me. Um, in other words, this truth value is unknown. Okay. All right. Uh, I believe we have one more to do right here. Uh, and um, actually all of these are known values, so this one will be easy. I don't know how this problem got in here. A is true. X is false. Not X would be true. Uh, false or true, we know to be true. So we end up with true if and only if true, and that is true. Don't know how this problem snuck in here. No unknowns to be had. Anyway, um, I hope this helps you calculating truth values of expressions with some unknown parts.